Happy Hello! So this is another episode of our web caution in our subject Mathematics in the Modern World. So we'll be continuing our uh, topic in uh, statistics and last meeting we already discussed the importance and the different concepts of the statistics and we all know that statistics is a valuable tool to us because it serves as a planning, analyzing, interpreting process of our results in different investigation and researches. So basically it is indispensable because as we all know in all researches we use statistics. Okay, so for this day we'll be discussing a certain type, a certain area of the statistic and that's the descriptive statistics. Okay, so this descriptive statistics is uh, classified into three. We have the measure of position. The other one is the measure of variability. And the last one is the measure of shape. Okay, so this is the classification of our descriptive statistics. The measure of position is also known as the measures of central tendency where we find a single value about which of the set of observation tend to cluster. Uh, ito yung madalas natin ginagamit in order to find representative coming from our data set. Okay, madalas natin kinukuha si measure of position by using the measurement of its uh, mean median and mode while the measure of variability describes the spread of variability of the observation in the data set so we measure the measure of variability by uh, measuring range the variance the standard co uh, deviation and the coefficient of variation while the measure of shape it's more on the uh, peakness and the symmetry the position of the measure of position by using measure of shape so we are getting this skewness and kurtosis so for this uh, video we will be focusing on the measure of position or the measure of central tendency so as what i've said earlier uh, in measure of position it is classified into three we have the arithmetic mean the median and the mode okay so basically we are all familiar familiar with this three the mean, the median, and the mode. So, ito yung madalas nating kinukuha in statistics. But, uh, the question is, paano nga ba natin na-identify sa isang data set na kapag kukuha tayo ng central tendency, we'll be able to gather a representative from that data set using these three uh, methods. So, basically, hindi uh, hindi nag nagsisignify na kapag kinuha natin yung average, madalas kasi natin kinukuha yung data set. Specifically, kapag sa score, madalas natin kinukuha ay yung mean or the average to uh, determine the, uh, uh, or to classify or identify the representative from the group. But, no. Hindi ibig sabihin na kapag nagka-classify tayo, it will, will be just getting the average. But, we can also get the median and the mode. So, saan-saan nga ba natin ginagamit si mean, median, and mode? So, basically, si median kinukuha natin kapag si mean ay kapag yung data natin may mga tiyatawag na outliers. Ito yung mga data, ito yung mga data na sobrang laki ng range. So, for example, meron from score, sabihin natin na nagpa-test, tapos kumuha tayo ng data at nakita natin that the highest score is 98 and then next to 98 is 54. So, ibig sabihin malaki yung range nya dun sa ating 54 at makaka-apekto yun dun sa average natin. So, hindi natin uh, pwedeng gamitin si mean for that uh, certain instant but we can use median. Okay? The median ito naman yung uh, measure of central tendency or measure of position by we get the uh, the midpoint of the data yung pinakagitna ng ating data so ina-arrange natin siya tinitignan natin ano yung pinakagitna dun sa data natin and that's what we call the median or the middle middle part of our data okay 
So, si Mi, Mi dyan naman ang pinagkaiba niya sa Min. Kung si Min, uh, merong bearing yung scoring kasi kinukuha natin yung average. Si Mi dyan, ang nag, nagmamatter doon ay yung position ng ating data. Okay? So, kapag hindi natin pwedeng gamitin si, si Mi dyan, pwede naman natin gamitin si Mode. So, saan ba natin ginagamit si Mode? So, kadalasan kapag medyo malaki yung data at nakikita natin na madalas lumabas yung isang specific value then that's the time na pwede natin din gamitin si mode so si mode ito yung madalas or most frequent na value na lumalabas dun sa ating data set okay? para mas lalo natin maintindihan si mean median mode will be having example okay? so first for example we have this data so you have 10 12 12 13 13 14 15 18 22 okay in getting the mean of this data we know that we will be just getting the summation of our data from 1 to 10 okay over the total number of the observation so you have 10 plus 12 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 14 15 plus 18 plus 22 we get 142 over the total number of our observation we have 10 so 142 divided by 10 is equal to 14.2 so that is the mean of this example next we have median okay so the median is equal to the position, yung pinakagitna, the middle position of our data. If we will be getting the median, uh, madali lang natin i-identify kasi kukunin lang natin yung yung position ng ating uh, ng mga data natin. So, kailangan malaman natin yung number of observation para mas lalo natin ma madalian to get the median. So, to get the median, si x where is the si x ay yung ating data, tapos si n will be the position, so n divided by 2 so since yung n natin is uh, even kapag even yung data natin kukunin natin si x n over 2 plus si n, si x n over 2 plus 1 divided by 2 for n is even okay so for example in this one our x sub n over 2 n is 10 so 10 over 2 is 5 so x sub 5 plus x sub n over 2 plus 1 so we have x sub 6 divided by 2 so your x sub 5, x sub 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, x sub 6, okay? So we have 13 plus 13, then divided by 2, we get 13. So, madali lang siya kapag si n is odd. Kapag si n is odd, you just use the formula x sub n over 2, okay? So, for n is add. Okay? You have that on your handout. Okay? So, nakita natin the median for this data we have 13. Okay? Using this one. 13 plus 13 over 2 is 13. Okay? So, x sub 5 plus x sub 6 over 2. Yun. We have the median. Next, last one, we will be getting the mode. Yung mode naman, yun yung frequent na value na makikita natin sa ating data. It is the most frequent observation. So, if we will observe ano bang uh, data, ano bang value yung, yung maraming uh, marami, marami siya in terms of uh, its observation, most frequent. So, you have 12 dalawang beses lumabas and you have 13 na tatlo. So, basically, kitang kita that our mode is 13. So that is measure of central tendency. Kung makikita natin napakadaling kumuha ng measure ng 
measure ng ating central tendency or uh, ng ating position. Basically, because yung data natin ay considered as ungrouped data. Okay? Bakit ungrouped ungrouped data si si example natin? Because yung data natin na, na ginawa natin example are not in a frequency distribution table. Kapag nasa frequency distribution table siya, katawag natin siyang group. Question, yun lang ba ang classification kapag ungroup and group? Okay? Kapag ungroup data, it should be less than 30, while group data should be 30 and above. Okay? Yun number ng observation natin. Kapag less than 30 na siya, we will be considering it as ungrouped data. Pero kapag more than 30 na siya or 30, we consider that, that as group data. Okay, so iba yung computation ng ating mean, median, mode sa group at iba din yung computation natin for group data. Okay, so this is an example of our ungrouped data in measuring the mean, median, and mode. So now, let's proceed to group data. Okay, so for group data, we'll be using our example last video. Okay, so kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung last video natin, nandun yung example natin. Okay, so last video, kinuha natin yung frequency distribution ng ating data and we came up with this frequency distribution. So you have the class interval, the frequency, the true class boundary, the class mark, the relative frequency, our less than cumulative frequency, and our greater than cumulative frequency. So this is our example. Tingko ko nila ting example for our data in getting the mean median mode of group. Okay. So in getting the uh, in getting the data for our group, we'll be using this formula. Okay. So for median. Okay, sa median natin, we'll be getting the formula mean is equal to the summation of our f, f sub i, x sub i, uh, summation over the summation of your f sub i or your n. Okay, basically your n. Okay, so next for median, you have the the lower class boundary of your median class. So later on, don sa example napin natin yung median class ano nga ba yung tatag ating median class from the plus the class size the number observation over two minus the frequency of your uh, less than cumulative frequency immediately preceding your median class yun yung f over b you have your uh, less than cumulative frequency of your immediate Uh, proceed, immediately preceding the median class and your um, the frequency of your median class FMD okay while in getting your mode you have the lower class boundary of your modal class so iba yung median class natin sa modal class so median class specific lang siya for median and for modal class yun yung kinukuha natin for mode so the lower class boundary of your modal class plus uh, the class size quantity Times FMO is the, is the frequency of your modal class minus FB. Your F uh, sub B is the frequency of the class immediately preceding the modal class over two times your FMO minus your F of B F sub B minus F sub A, which is the frequency of the modal class following your modal class. Okay. So that is your computation of your group, your median, your mean, your group mean, group median, and your group mode. Okay, let's go back to our example. Okay, so this is our example. Okay, so given this data, so unahin natin ko kung nensi ating mean. So the mean is the summation of your f sub i times your x sub i over your n from 1 to for example k okay so how do we get that okay so una so we will be identifying 
f sub i times x sub i. So, yung f sub i na tinatawag natin dyan, it is, it is your frequency. And yung x sub i is your class mark. So, gagawin lang natin una, mag-create tayo ng panibagong table. Okay? Sabihin natin, this is your uh, new table. Okay? Kasunod ng ating greater than cumulative frequency, where you will be getting uh, your frequency times your class mark. Okay? Balikan natin, the class mark is the mid midpoint of your class interval. Okay. So, frequency is 4 times 45. So, you get f, f of i sub times x sub i. You will be getting 180. Next, you have 3 times 56. So, you will be getting 168. Okay. 6 times 67, 402. Then, 8 times 78 you have 624 you have 7 times 89 okay you have 623 and then your 2 times 100 is 200 so yan so ito yung mga kasunod na table natin okay so, since we already identify x sub f sub i times x sub i, the next thing that we have to uh, compute is the summation of our x sub i times our x sub i. So, what is the summation? So, i-add lang natin si 180 plus 168 plus 402 plus 624 plus 623 plus 200, we get 2,197. Then, after that, Dahil identified na natin si ating summation of f of i times x sub i, then we uh, use the formula in our mean. So, our mean is equal to what is the summation of your x sub i okay, over n. So, you have 2,197 over your n. What is your n? you have 30 observation then you get 73.23 so that is your mean okay this is your mean 73.23 okay the next thing let me measure natin is your median okay so we'll be computing our median. Okay. So the median is equal to all the lower class boundary of our median class plus the class size times n over two minus the frequency uh, the frequency of uh, the frequency of the median class immediately preceding the median class okay and then over our the frequency of our median class okay so first we identify what is our median class so ano nga ba yung ating median class okay so our median class is the it is the class where uh, you get your less than cumulative frequency makikita natin na yung n natin over 2 is greater than or equal to our less than cumulative frequency so kailangan si class itong class na to it should be yung ating uh, yung ating less than cumulative frequency ay dapat greater than or equal to dun sa one half ng n natin. So, what is one half of our n? We have 30 over 2 is equal to 15. So, maghahanap tayo ng data dito sa ating less than cumulative frequency na equal or greater than kay less than sa ating one half n. Okay? So, you have so, makikita natin you have 4 
7, 13, 21, 28, and 30. So, kapag si 13, less than nasa siya sa ating uh, 1 half n. So, therefore, yung next doon sa ating uh, sa ating yung greater than doon sa ating 1 half n will be our median class. So, basically, our median class will be this one. Okay? Ito yung ating median class. You have yung class interval na 73 minus 83. Okay. So, let's perform now the computation. Okay. So, you have what is uh, the lower class boundary of your median class. So, dito natin siya makikita. So, what is the lower? This is your LCB and this is your UCB the lower class boundary is your up and upper class boundary. So, lower class boundary of your median class is 72.5 plus what is your class size? So, yung class size natin yung kinompute natin nung last time, we have our C which is 11. So, yun yung from 40 to uh, 50. Okay? Times our N which is 30 over 2 minus the frequency immediately preceding your modal class so this is your modal class 8 and immediately preceding preceding uh, the uh, uh, less than cumulative frequency okay f of b is the less than cumulative frequency immediately preceding the median class so we have yung bago ng median class natin we have 13 over the frequency of your median class which is 8 okay so you have 72.5 plus 11 times 30 over 2 minus 13 over 8 you get 75.25 okay so we compute na lang to okay so we'll be getting 75.28 so ulitin natin 72.5 saan natin kinuha that is the lower class boundary of our median class so ito yon 72.5 and then our C is our class size okay so our class size is yung kinompute natin last time in getting the frequency distribution table so you have 11 your N is your uh, number of observation you have 30 over 2 which is constant minus f sub b is the less than cumulative frequency immediately preceding your median class so yung less than cumulative frequency bago yung ating median class so you have 30 over 8 8 is the frequency of your median class so you get 75.25 okay so, last one will be getting the mode. Okay. Okay. Mode is equal to the lower class boundary of our modal class plus class size times quantity of our frequency of our modal class minus the frequency uh of the class immediately preceding the modal class okay yung bago yung modal class natin anong frequency and then 2 times the frequency of our modal class minus f of b so the same dun sa ating f of b sa taas f sub b sa taas minus f sub a which is the frequency of the class following the modal class okay so let's identify first ano nga ba yung modal class natin so si modal class hindi necessary na laging parehas kay median class but it can be pwede silang magkaparehas na class okay so modal class is the mode the class where it has the highest number of frequency so titignan lang natin yung frequency ng ating mga class interval yung may pinakamataas na frequency yun yung tatawagin nating modal class so in this instance okay sa ating example yung median class natin is also our modal class but take note guys hindi 
lagi na uh, magsasama yung mid- modal at median class natin. May instances pa rin na maaring nasa 40 to 50 yung ating uh, modal class pero iba yung mid- median class natin. Okay, so for this example, panas tayo ng modal class. So, yun pa rin yung kukunin natin. You have the interval 73 to 83. Okay, so we'll be getting the uh, values of our uh, solutions for the for, uh, for formula, of our formula in our modal, in getting our modal. Okay, so we have the lower class boundary of our modal class. So, lower class boundary of our modal class is, again, 72.5 plus the class size, which is 11. Okay, so, the frequency of our modal class is 8, okay, minus the frequency of the class pre- uh, immediately preceding. Okay, so, F, uh, uh, F sub B is yung frequency bago yung frequency ng modal class natin. So, you have 6. Okay, minus 6 over 2, which is a constant, times your frequency of modal class 8 minus the frequency of the class immediately preceding our modal class is 6. Okay, parehas lang siya. And F sub A is the frequency of the class uh, after or following the modal class. So, ito yung modal class natin. Following, we have 7. Okay. So, we have 72.5 plus 11 quantity multiplied to 8 minus 6 over 2 times 8 minus 6 minus 7. Then, we'll be getting 79.83. Okay. So, that is our modal class. So, ulitin natin. 72.5 siya yung ating lower class boundary of our modal class. C is the class size, which is 11. F sub MO, this is the frequency of our modal class. Okay? F of uh, F sub B is the frequency of a class immediately preceding our modal class. We have 6. So, the same two constant FMO minus FB minus FA. FA is the Of, is the frequency of the class following the modal class. So, you have 7. Okay? So, we get 18, uh, 79.83. So, that is our mean median mode. Okay? So, by next time, we'll be uh, solving the measures of variability by getting the range, the uh, standard deviation, the variance, and the coefficient of uh, variation. And then the other one is the measure of shape, the cortosis, and the uh, skewness of the data. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you.